Hi, I'm Dan Cooperstein, and welcome to this episode of Compliance Minute. While President-elect Donald Trump is probably more famous for his reality TV show than his healthcare policies, there is quite a lot of substance to his proposed healthcare policies, and their implementation will require significant changes to, to U.S. healthcare and tax laws. The first priority for, for Trump will be the repeal of the ACA. However, this is not likely to be as easy as it sounds. First of all, approximately 20 million people have gained insurance over the last three years through the ACA. And many people on both sides of the political spectrum like certain provisions of the ACA, including provisions about pre-existing conditions, preventive care, and age 26 dependent coverage. Even Trump himself has said that he likes the rules about pre-existing conditions and age 26 dependent coverage. Further, the individual mandate, the employer mandate, and taxes on, on the insurers and the plans, the things that people don't like, are precisely what makes the coverage affordable and, and available. It's what pays for the ACA's benefits. So without this core structure, it's unclear how the ACA will be funded in the future. Additionally, other political challenges will likely arise to any replacement plan that is proposed, including questions of whether all of the Republicans will agree to the plan and whether Democrats will filibuster any legislation that makes its way to the Senate. But regardless of these challenges, the president is likely, the president-elect is likely to push forward with his health care policy proposals. So let's take a closer look at what those are. First, Mr. Trump wants to modify laws that inhibit the sale of health insurance across state lines. This policy will allow vendors to offer health insurance in any state as long as the plan purchased complies with that state's requirements. This is expected to increase competition and lower insurance costs. Secondly, he wants to increase access to health savings accounts, or HSAs. Specifically, Trump wants contributions in HSAs to be tax-free and to be allowed to become part of the estate of the individual HSA account holder. While HSAs have become even more popular with employers in recent years, these new rules are likely to significantly increase their popularity by both employers and individuals alike. Third, he wants to require price transparency from all healthcare providers, especially doctors and healthcare organizations like clinics and hospitals. The goal of this policy is to make it easier for individuals to shop around uh, and find the best prices for procedures, exams, or any other medical services. Fourth, he wants, to block, he wants to block grant Medicaid to the states. He expects that this will increase the authority of state governments over Medicaid funds and reduce federal overhead. The goal is to create incentives for states to seek out and eliminate fraud, waste, and abuse in order to better preserve those Medicaid funds. Additionally, Trump wants to open up the drug market to more foreign competition in order to lower costs and increase options for consumers, so long as those foreign competitors um, can provide safe and reliable medicines. So what are the key takeaways here for employers? Well, it's still really hard to say at this point in time precisely how these new policies will impact employer-sponsored plans and coverage. Two things are quite clear, however. First, regardless of how the above policy prescriptions work, uh, repealing the ACA will likely be one of the most difficult challenges for the new president, as the over six-year-old law has provided millions with coverage and, and has, has many benefits that people have enjoyed. And second, regardless of what happens to the ACA, the bottom line is that nothing is happening overnight. Republican lawmakers have said that even if they are successful in repealing and replacing the ACA in the first 100 days of the Trump presidency, it may take as long as three years before any replacement plan becomes effective. So for the time being, plan sponsors should continue complying with the ACA in the same way they did before the election. For more information on this and other topics, please visit our Knowledge Center at corpsin.com. Thank you.